Hey gang, what's up? Welcome back here to a special edition of Intuitive Angling and really appreciate you guys uh, checking the video out. Got a special deal for you guys today. We are gonna give you an extensive seminar on shaky heads and wacky rigs because guys, we are right in the middle of the prime wacky rigging shaky head and season. So I'm gonna go into extreme detail here in this seminar about um, how to fish them, the, the, how the setups I got, how I like to rig them, uh, and just a bunch of juice. It's gonna be a, a really good informative seminar for you guys. So in exchange for all this info that I'm gonna give up here, I just uh, ask you guys, I just uh, like to invite you guys to, to uh, listen to a few of the housekeeping tips here uh, before we get started here. Just wanted to remind you guys a couple different ways you can help the channel out here if you're interested. Um, the best way you guys can help it out, like I said, is uh, going to our view product shopping tab that you guys see on the videos at the bottom of the screen. We list 30 products on there. And uh, uh, you guys click on those products twice, the channel gets credit. And YouTube is actually getting ready to change this, guys. They're gonna get rid of that product tagging and they're gonna come up with something else similar to that. So I'll keep you guys updated with that. But man, that's, uh, that's the best way you can support the channel. Also, please check out our Fish the Moment Lake Map Breakdowns, guys. We got, uh, we're building Lake Map Breakdowns for the spring season um, on fishthemoment.com. You guys can order them and GPS or download 40 waypoints we put into your GPS units, plus a bunch of info on how to fish each spot. And I'll put the Fish the Moment Lake Map Breakdown in the description there. Also, if you're interested in booking an on-the-water lesson with me, uh, shoot me a, a private message on my Facebook page, Randy Block at Professional Angler. And two finally things, two more things, guys. Solar Bat is having a, uh, a March sale, extension of their April sale. Throughout the month of April, you get 30% off my signature series, Randy Block at uh, Model Sunglasses. Um, I'll put the link in the description there. And finally, if you guys are interested in becoming a channel member, uh, just please uh, check out, just go to my homepage, my YouTube homepage, click on the About section, and, cl and click on Intuitive Memberships, and it gives you the info there. It's much appreciated. You guys uh, <clears throat> bearing with me on that. <clears throat> okay, guys, let's get into this. Um, to me, when I, when I think about the month of April, I think about wacky rigs and shaky heads. I don't, I, I really don't think there's another month that's any bit better. And a lot of this has to do with um, the way the fish are positioned and how they're setting up and the stage that they're in. Now, when we're talking about wacky rigging and shaky head, and I'm talking about pretty much most all of the lakes in the country, except the guy, say the lakes, some of the lakes in Florida or the lakes like way up New, New York and upstate New York, some of the geographically extreme parts of the country. But if you're anywhere from like... Um, Indiana to Alabama and Georgia, all the way to California or back east to North Carolina and Virginia. This is what we're going to talk about here is going to be applicable to you guys here. Now, one of the reasons this works so good, a lot of it has to do, you know, and I'm going to get in, like I said, to the details of how to rig it and how I like to set it up and some, you know, secret stuff with it. But I want to explain a little bit to you guys about why it works so good before we get into that. A lot of it has to do with the personality and mood of the bass. Now, one of the things that you guys will find out in April is April is one of those months where the mood and the personality of the bass, they don't really like to chase much there. Now, you can catch them occasionally on a moving bait, you know, like a swim bait in the top water once in a while. Not like they won't hit a moving bait, but when those fish get started, when they start to get keyed into the spawn, whether it be the late pre-spawn or the spawn or the early post-spawn, they don't like to chase and they like to, they will much sooner and much more, more readily bite something off of the bottom, something finessey and something a little bit slower than they will anything else. And that combined with the fact that there's more fish in that water that's two to 10 foot deep in April, that's what makes these techniques so, so good. So that's the first thing about it. So let's get into a little bit here about the colors, the sizes, how I rig them, and then I'm, I'm going to get into some areas about how to fish it. So let's let's talk a little bit about the, the wacky rig first, and then we'll get into the shaky head. Now, there's two primary lures that I use to wacky rig, and I'm going to talk about situation for each one of them. The first one is a soft plastic stick bait, like this is a Zoom's Linky or Senko, whatever you, whatever you guys want to use. Also, guys, I'll put the bait works link in the description if you guys are interested in stocking up on this. You guys can get up to that link, but you got the this, the fatter bodied Cinco, and then you got the uh, trick worm, the smaller diameter trick worm. Now each one of these has an application. So 
First of all, um, let's talk a little bit about the soft plastic stick bait, the, when you want to use it. This is going to work a little bit better when the fish are a little bit more active and aggressive, or if you got some weather conditions that are a little bit more adverse. When I'm using the bigger, larger diameter uh, soft plastic stick bait for wacky rigging, I'm usually in a situation where I'm... The remote? Yeah. Uh, let me come in and see. Okay, guys, I got to get the remote for Elijah. Yeah, he's got Elijah lined out there. So anyway, what I was saying about the soft plastic stick bait, guys, um, this is a situation where if I'm fishing water visibilities that are a little bit more off color than clear. Now, I'm talking about water visibilities anywhere between say a foot and a half to three feet, or possibly four feet, let's say a foot and a half to four feet, um, the, the larger diameter bait is probably gonna be a little bit better, especially if you have that water clarity in that two to three foot zone. It just offers a little bit larger profile, a little bit more bulk. The fish can key on it a little bit better. Also, early or late in the day under low light conditions, if you got cloudy days, if you got rainy days, if you got some wind, Again, the little bit larger bait will help you out in, under those conditions. Um, another thing with the soft plastic stick bait is you can fish it um, a little bit better if it's windy and you can also fish it deeper because the soft plastic stick baits have quite a bit of salt in them. Now the Zlinky doesn't have as much salt as like a Senko. A Senko will actually fall faster than the Zlinky, but compared to like a straight tail worm, like a robo worm or trick worm, it's gonna fall a little bit faster. So if I'm thinking those fish are in that, you know, five, eight foot zone, a lot of times I'm wacky rigging with this to get it down a little bit deeper. Also, you're gonna find out if you're skipping and, you know, skipping these wacky rigs around some type of cover, like around docks or underneath trees or something like that, they tend to be a little bit better. It seems like uh, under those conditions, I will use that here. So the first thing I do on it is, um, we talked about this, if you guys watch the channel, you've seen me talk about this a lot, is, and this is so critical guys, is break up the salt in them, just rub them up, you know, quite a bit like that. And um, th the reason this is so critical is number one, it get, it makes the bait more pliable, it, it gives it more action, it allows it to look more natural, and also the color changes on it. And the color, when you bring the salt to the surface, like I'm doing here, it creates a color that um, is completely different from the stock. So let me show you the before and after with this, what it looks like here. Here's the one I just had, and here's after I roughed it up here. So you can see the color difference on it like that. It's quite a big difference. No, actually, I got the wrong one here. There's, there's a, here's the two differences here on it. It just looks, looks more natural, looks more real to the fish. The next thing I do, let's go to the hook. Now, the hook is pretty pretty critical, guys. I've I've experimented with a lot of different hooks and I like a lot of guys I started out with like the circle hooks and the wacky rig hooks that are <clears throat> sort of like the kale type hooks but guys I found out and actually David Dudley's the one that got me on this a straight shank hook this is the Gamagatsu uh, G finesse uh, heavy cover um, uh, or finesse heavy cover hook a two watt straight shank hook Hooked right through the middle is the best way to go with it. Guys, I do not lose any fish on this setup here. Now, obviously, if you're fishing an area that's real snaggy, say if you're trying to skip it around wood or something like that, you, you may have to use something with a weed guard. You may have to go to one of those, you know, pre-made wacky rig hooks with a weed guard. But this is surprisingly weedless. You'd be surprised how weedless this is. I fish this 95% of the time just like this. And one of the things, guys, I'll tell you, and this is another one of those deals that gets people mad at me, do not use an O-ring or a collar. You got everybody out there seems like they put an O-ring on it, and then when they put their O-ring, they hook it like that. Guys, you do not want to use an O-ring. The best wacky rigger in this country is John Cox. John Cox hooks it just like this. He doesn't hook the thing in there like that. There's no benefit to you using a collar other than the fact that you're going to save a few baits not that many. I don't lose that many just hooking it in like that. You're going to get more bites and you're going to land more bites because what happens is when you hook the bait in the middle like this, it falls like this. It falls straight down like that. It gives the, the tail a really good action. And when those fish come down on it, hit it, they get that hook right there in the roof of their mouth every single time. Now, if you put it on a collar, say you've got one of those O-rings that goes in there, you have to hook it like this in there. And when that bait, when it's fallen, it's fallen like this, down like that. 
And when you, not only does it not look as real, but when you set the hook, it's sort of in a cockeyed angle. And on top of that, the collar is visible to the fish. So I'm telling you guys right now, hook them like this. This is, you're going to get a lot more bites, you know, setting it up like that. Another thing that I like to do with it, don't, don't get like really particular that you got to get it right in the middle perfectly because a lot of times I'll put it off to the side just a little bit like that and it seems to work just as good, good for me like that. So that's the way I set it up. Now, color choices on there, a lot of it has to do again with the sunlight conditions, has to do with the water clarity. I prefer that my favorite is this watermelon candy here. This is watermelon candy, Zoom Slinky. But the green pumpkin or any type of a watermelon color is going to be just as good. I don't get real picky on it um, because one of the reasons I don't get real picky with the stock colors is since I rough the, rough them up, they look different. So you can't you can't duplicate it at the same time every time because every one of these baits it doesn't have the exact amount of salt in it, and some of the salt is deeper and shallower. So and the extent of which you rough it up will also change the look at it. So, um, you know, just, you can't go wrong with just a green pumpkin or a watermelon. Now, if the water clarity is closer to like 12 inches in visibility, which is probably 12 inches or 18 inches, which is like the minimum that I like for a wacky rig, sometimes I'll go to like a June bug or a red bug, a darker color in a situation like that at times. But usually in a situation like that, I'm fishing, I'm fishing it around some type of trees or some type of cover, but... Uh, for the most part, for an open water application, it's the more natural one. Now, as far as the other ones, as far as the trick worms, let's talk a little bit about that. If you're using a trick worm or like a robo worm, a couple different things about this. Number one, like we said, it's going to fall quite a bit slower. So since this bait falls slower, I'm fishing this in more shallow water. And most of the time, if I'm fishing a wacky rig trick worm or smaller diameter worm, I'm keying in on that water depth that's less than four foot deep. And I'm also going to fish this bait if the water's dirty. Um, I mean, excuse me, if the water's clear. I, it's, you'll get more bites on, a, on something like a trick worm wacky rig than you will a big soft plastic stick bait if that water visibility is over four feet. There's just more finesse. It looks more natural to them. And also it falls slower. Another thing about that is you will find that a trick worm or straight tail worm like this is more effective like right when those fish are actually bedding. The soft plastic stick bait, the larger diameter, sometimes it can be a little bit better like in the late pre-spawn or the early post-spawn. But when those fish are up there actively bedding and you're noticing beds, you're going to get more bites on the on just the trick worm because Trick worm's got a little bit of salt in it, but, and you can still break it up some, but it doesn't have near the salt, so you got really got to work it up a little bit. Now, the hook a little bit, I go to a little bit smaller hook. I go to a one-aught. This is the same uh, G heavy cover, G finesse, finesse uh, worm hook here, straight shank. Again, hooking it right in the middle. Don't put the collar or anything on it. Just rigging it the same way, just like that. The fall on this bait is probably going to be almost twice as slow as the soft plastic stick bait. So from that standpoint, you got to be a little, more, a little bit more patient with it. Colors are pretty much the same here, guys. I use the green pumpkins and watermelons, although um, sometimes, you know, if it is dirty, I'll use like a June bug, especially if I can fish in maybe some clear water, tannic water that has grass, uh, like some of the Florida lakes or something like that. The June bug or the red bug sometimes works a little bit better. Um, now, as far as um, the areas that you want to fish this and how you want to fish it, we're going to talk about this and we'll get into the shaky head. Um, when you're fishing the wacky rig stuff like that, you're basically fishing whatever shoreline cover is available or whatever bank is available in those areas that either are staging areas or spawning areas or recuperating areas. So, my favorite area to do this in is like, let's say for example, you know, you got to just pick out one of the biggest creeks on your lake. And if you've got a creek that's got some coves off of that particular creek, um, start fishing about halfway back in those coves. And initially, you know, start out just fan casting down the bank and try to target maybe that two to 10 foot zone, depending upon how clear the water is with the soft plastic stick bait. And if I'm wanting to cover a little bit more water, I use a soft plastic stick bait simply because it will fall faster. <clears throat> but if I like get to the back of the cove and the water gets shallower 
and I don't, it narrows down where I don't have as much room to cover. Then a lot of times I'll pick up the, uh, the straight tail, like the trick worm, a little bit more subtle approach with that. But I'm basically targeting whatever I have available. There could be docks, I'm fishing around docks, skipping it under the walkways, that type of stuff. Walkways, guys, skipping wacky rigs under walkways is a great way to catch them in the springtime. Trying to get it around laydowns, the edge of grass beds, or just down whatever bank. It, it can be gravel, mud, you know, rock, whatever. It's just like there's a lot of fish up in those spawning coves. So that's the first approach with it. Now, the next thing you want to do with it is how to work it in there. Now, one of the things I found about, there's a couple different little tr tricks and keys to generating strikes with a wacky rig based upon water clarity again. Let's start out if you got fairly clear water. If you've got water over four foot of visibility, one of the things I like to do is I'll make the cast out there and as soon as the, the I try to cast all the way to the bank and as soon as it hits the, the water, I shake it like this and reel it along the surface for about that far, about that far underneath the surface. And a lot of times, if there's some fish up shallow, they may come right off and get it off the surface or just under the surface, but it gets their attention. If it's clear water and there's a fish within 10 or 20 foot of there, you, you jerking it across the surface or maybe that far under the surface will bring them over there and then you kill it and let it fall to the bottom and watch your line on the way down there because you want it to fall on a slack line. Probably, I'm going to guess, on a wacky rig, regardless of the one, about 25% of the bites you're going to get are going to be on the way down. It'll be falling and you'll see your line tick like that before it hits the bottom and 75% of them come when that bait first hits the bottom and you move it maybe two to three feet, that's when you're gonna get 99% of your bites. If you don't get a bite after reeling it and working it maybe five feet, just reel it in and make another cast. Now, the way that I like to work it is when I throw it out there and it hits the bottom, I just pull it up like that and maybe just shake it a little bit, take the slack out and just pull it like that, maybe let it come off the bottom just a little bit and then fall slow and just work it slow. The The whole, key with a wacky rig is you can't go wrong if you just take your time, let it fall down there, and work it slow. This is a technique, guys, that you cannot get in a hurry with. You have got to be patient. you got to be slow with it. You're never going to get very many bites on it, especially from the good fish, you know, if you work a little bit too fast. And also, don't be afraid to fish it a little deeper because I know like here in the Ozarks and clear water we have here, guys, sometimes, you know, those fish are going to be down in, you know, 10 to 15 foot of water. And if we have water visibility of around 10 foot in some of the Ozark lakes, those fish will bed in 10 or 12 foot of water. So it takes a while for that bait to get down to the bottom in 10 foot of water. So just work slow and, and be patient with that. And it's going to definitely reward you with some good fish. Okay, so let's, and let's talk, well, just one more thing. Let's we'll talk a little bit about setup. Um, most of the time I'm fishing it on eight pound test, Seaguar and Vizex line with that Mega Bass Whip Snake spinning rod. I do not use braid to fluorocarbon. You know, you guys have followed the channel. You're going to get a lot more bites if you use straight fluorocarbon, guys. Just do, a, do yourself a favor, put your braid away, get you a spool, spool up a, some eight pound test Seaguar and Vizex or whatever eight pound test fluorocarbon you use. You'll be good to go with that. It's going to get you a lot more bites. Okay, that's the wacky rigs, guys. Let's get a little bit shaky heads now. Now, the shaky heads, the the the, the areas are the same as far as we're, when we're talking about shaky heading. Um, it's the same thing, so I don't really have to reiterate as far as the type of areas to look for. One thing that I will say about the shaky heads is um, a lot of times the bass will stage in the late pre-spawn on secondary points in some of those coves I'm talking about. So. If you've got water temperatures in the upper 50s, maybe mid to upper 50s, try fishing that shaky head on those deeper secondary points, maybe down to 20 feet. Because a lot of times like that, if you have a mixed species lake, like smallmouth and spotted bass and largemouth, and you've got clear water, those fish will stage pretty deep on those secondary points right before moving up, and the shaky head is a good way to catch them. So let's talk, there's two different scenarios I use with the shaky head. There's two different heads. I use a 16th of an ounce and an eighth of an ounce. This is the uh, Gamagatsu Tricky Head. Guys, this is a freaking awesome hook. If you've never tried it, this is a 16th of an ounce. And this is a Davis Lures uh, Shaky Head, eighth of an ounce. 
I prefer a 16th. A lot of guys don't, 16ths aren't really easy to find for one thing, but guys, I can promise you, you will get more bites on a 16th of an ounce head than you will an eighth ounce head. Because again, it's about the rate of the fall on the thing. And it's also about when you're working that bait along the bottom <coughs> and you pick it up, how it falls back down. And one of the things you'll find about the mood and personality of bass in the spring during the spawn is they like a slow fall. So don't, if, if you're going to throw a shaky head, never go to above eighth of an ounce. I don't care if the wind's blowing 25, you can still fish effectively with an eighth of an ounce, but try going to a 16th, you will catch more. So those are the two heads. Now, as far as the, uh, the setups on it here, um, oh yeah, one other thing I forgot to mention here, just uh, briefly here on the wacky rig, let me back up just a hair. Another good bait, guys, is a four inch uh, soft plastic stick bait. This is... You know, here's the, the six inch Linky. Here's, this is a four inch Senko. Guys, you can also catch a bunch of fish on a four inch model too. If you've got a lake that's got, you know, really clear water, and especially if there's a lot of spotted bass, uh, try, try wacky rigging, wacky, wacky rigging that four inch soft plastic stick bait. Forgot to mention that. So let's get into the, the, the shaky heads here. Um, first of all, I'm going to show you a little trick. You know, I've covered this before, but if you guys didn't see this, I want to reiterate how important this is. The way that you rig your shaky head is going to have a lot to do with landing and getting bites. So one of the big keys on it, guys, is you always have to keep your keeper in mind. Now, one of the things I'm going to give you guys some tips here is you, there's a lot of shaky heads, guys, on the market that has those springs on it. Don't use the spring one, guys. The spring ones are not near as good as the straight shanks with the keepers here. All of the top shaky headers I know in the, in the country this is the setup they use. They use the keeper. They do not use the spring because the bait looks different in the water. And also you get better hookups like this. So start out coming through like a, maybe an eighth of an inch, come all the way through. And the important thing guys, is you want to bring that keeper through. So make sure you work it out where it's a, that keeper is coming all the way through. You get it here. You can see right there, it's come through and, and once you have that keeper through, it's going to stay on there really good, and you're not going to lose hardly any of these. It's going to stay in position. You'll be able to fish the worm a long time. So this is actually a video we did a couple days ago. I'll just reiterate. Do not hook your shaky head like this, right back in the worm. See, it's just in the middle of the worm. You're going to lose a lot of fish like this because you have to penetrate too much plastic. Come through it. Bunch it up just a hair. Come all the way through the bait like that, and then go back and forth with it. Just just work it and make a channel there. You want, you want this to slide easily. And then my favorite way to rig it, to fish it, is just like this. I have the hook point and the barb completely exposed, like you can see right there. This is extremely weedless, guys. The only time I do not throw this is if I'm fishing it around brush piles or snaggy snuff, but if I'm fishing it around any type of rock banks, just fish it like this because you will land so many more fish. When you set that hook, you know, you got everything all you got. It just comes down like that and you've got the fish. Now, if it's snaggy, just take the tip and just put it right back in the, the top of the worm like that. Just barely put the tip in there just like that. And it's going to allow you to fish around brush or any, anything like that. So that's the way I rig both of them. Now, colors are also important here before we get into how to, how to work it. Primarily, I'm using two different setups here, guys. I've got a four inch finesse worm, and I use the four inch guys if I have a lake that has, again, a lot of mixed species, particularly if it's heavy on spotted bass. Say, if I'm fishing in Lake Lanier in Georgia, you know, some, you know, just lakes, you know, Lake uh, uh, Norman, you know, Table Rock, any lake that's got a lot of spotted bass, you will catch more bass on a four inch than you will the six. Um, even good ones too. So, you know, if you've got a lot of spotted bass in clear water, try the four inch. But if you've got a primary large mouth uh, body of water, you know, the six inch trick worm is going to get you more bites. But you sort of have to let the fish tell you what they want on any particular day. Colors on the things, like I said, it's green pumpkin and watermelon. If I've got water visibilities between, say, three to three to five feet, I'm usually using green pumpkin. If I've got the water visibility of over six feet, I usually go to a, some type of a watermelon that's a little bit more translucent. And one of the big uh, 
tips I'll give you guys here. If you've got water visibility of less than three feet in the spring, put you a black one on. Black trick worm like this is going to get you a lot of bites. A lot of people don't use it, but I'm telling you guys right now, um, if it's a little bit off color, the black will definitely get bit. Also, I use black sometimes if the, uh, water, vis or if the um, water visibility is clear, but also if you have low light conditions. Say, for example, if you've got uh, it's raining or cloudy or early in the morning, the black or darker color is going to work a little bit better with that. Again, on the, the setup here, it's pretty much the same. Most of the time, I'm using anywhere between 6 to 10 pound test, Seaguar and Vizex uh, fluorocarbon on the shaky head. If I'm fishing the... Um, say the four inch uh, finesse worm on like a 16th ounce of an ounce head. A lot of times I'll use the six pound test. Uh, my, my preferred, my preferred line is the eight pound test under most situations. And if I'm uh, fishing around some heavier cover or the water's a little bit off colored and I'm using the eight ounce head, sometimes I'll go to 10 pound test. Again, on the mega bass whip snake spinning rod, six foot 11 inch spinning rod is going to be a, a good setup for that. But guys, that's the that's pretty much the system with it there. Um, you can't go wrong. I you know one of the things about a shaky head and a wacky rig in the month of April is even though it's a finesse technique, you're not fishing for little ones. You can catch twenty pound bags on a shaky head and a wacky rig. They are they produce big fish and they produce numbers of fish. That's why. Um, they're one of my primary go tos during the month of April. If I if I'm wacky rigging um, in April and say if I'm in a tournament and I'm going to a wacky rig backed up with a shaky head, I'm not just out there to get a check. I'm out there. That's the type of, of situation that can produce winning bags. There's been a ton of tournaments won on wacky rigs backed up by shaky heads. And a lot of times it's just a matter of the mood and the personality of the fish. Sometimes they like that, the shaky head, straight tailed worm look. And other times they like that, you know, the wacky rig, the way it's set up. You just have to mix and match. But one of the things you'll find out is most of the time when you're catching them on one or the other, they will bite both of them. Sometimes they usually bite one a little better than the other, but a lot of times you can catch them on both of them. So anyway, hope, you, hope it helps you guys catch some. Um, like I said, it's my favorite time of year to fish that I'm going to, I'm going to be fishing them over the next three weeks. And um, I think if you try some of these tips, you'll catch, catch a lot of fish and a few good ones. So hope it helps out guys. We'll talk later.